In this series of three videos, I am going to show you how to create an e-commerce site using WordPress on your local machine. Whether you are on a Mac or on a Windows, you'll be able to create an e-commerce site completely for free and it's going to take a few minutes, all right? It's going to be three videos. In the first video, we're going to install WordPress and just this web server and everything else it needs. In the second video, we're going to configure it and on the third video, we're going to test it. We're going to create a site that looks just like this. This is a site I have for my students, demostore.squaresqa.com. This is a public site. And this is an running on local. It looks exactly like that. And we're going to create this. The motivation behind this is to mainly is for my student. It's, it's for anybody who's trying to create a WordPress site, really. But I teach QA automation. We're software testing in automation, right? We write code that tests software. And when I'm teaching my students, I want them to practice on a real life application, an application that's most likely they're going to do in the real world at the job, right? So we use an e-commerce site and building our own e-commerce site instead of using the public one like I created, give us a chance to work on the back end. On the public site, and my students can use the front end, but I cannot give everybody access to the back end, right? The database and the API. But if they create their own, if you create your own, you're going to be able to test the back end and the front end. You're going to use the database, the API, and you can customize the front end the way you want to, right? So you're going to learn how to create this site and you can customize it however you want to. But I'm going to show you exactly how to create this site. And if you're using my code, the code that I provide as an example, that code would run against this site. The tests, the automated tests that I wrote, both front end and back end, they're going to run for this site. So um, if you want to run my code, you have to do it like this but you don't have to you can customize it the way you want you just have to learn how to customize okay so i've created a similar course previously it's about hour and a half and it's cut down into smaller modules if you want to watch that one you can you can watch it as a course on my site it's a free course on supersqa.com or it's also on youtube but it's a little bit outdated some of the uis they look different because now there's newer versions but the whole concept and everything else is the same so you can actually watch that if you want it to be more modularized all right so let's look at the steps, the three videos, basically, right? So three videos, I broke it down into first video is installing WordPress. And second video is uh, customizing the site, making it look like the way we want it to look like. And the third video is testing. We're going to test the API and we're going to test the, uh, the front end, checking out. We're going to use a coupon to check out. So let's go and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is in this video, we're just going to install WordPress, make sure it's running. All right. That's the whole point of this video. After this one, you can customize it however you want, or you can just follow me along. So to run WordPress, we need three things. Words, I mean, at least three things, right? WordPress is a web application, so it needs a web server. It needs a database. It needs a MySQL database specifically, and it needs PHP. And so for some people, we can install those things individually and configure them, but we don't have to do that. There are a lot of packages that bring that, that have all these things packaged at one, and all we have to do is install one application and everything just works. And I'm going to show you that. And my favorite one for that is map, even though there are other options. So the first thing is to install map. So you go to the, the website map.info, or you can just Google map, and you just download this application. It is uh, it's available both on Windows and on Mac. The UI looks a little bit different. So once you download it, it looks like this. This is on a Mac, as you can see, but on the Windows, it looks exactly like, it's a little bit different, but it works the same way. So first thing to notice is there is a button right here. It's going to say start on your case. On my case, it's already started. I can stop it. What that does is it's going to start and stop the web server and the database server. There's a MySQL database server and there's a web server, right? Apache. So I'm just going to click on start. It's going to open the browser. It's going to take you to the homepage. I'm going to come back right into it. Usually, there you go. I'll, I'll come back and talk about this real quick. But let's just finish looking at the app itself. So uh, Apache is selected by default. Uh, it's going to show you where, where the web root is. I don't think on Windows it does that here. But what the web root or the document root is, it's a web server, right? Web servers, it's web server's job is to serve you data, to serve you information, right? To content. And where is it going to serve it from? It's going to serve it from this folder. It's a setting. So when you go to preferences, uh, there's the general tab. We don't really have to do much in the general tab, actually anything. The port is very important to look at. We'll come back. The server is also important. It's, this is where you set the folder, and I, I recommend you don't change it. Cloud, you don't do anything there for now uh, and, and for what we're doing here. So under ports, it's showing you Apache is running on 8.8.8.8, 8, 8, 8, 
and my SQL is running on 8889. Those are really important to remember because we're going to use them. And what that means is Apache is listening on this port. That's the web server. That's when we go to the browser. That's how we connect to the server, the web server, right? Which is localhost in our case. And the MySQL server is running on 8889. And we want to talk to the database. This is a, this is a port we're going to use. You can change it if you want. You can put any numbers between these two numbers. But I don't see the point. But in case you're using 8889 for something else, which is rare, but it's possible, just change it to something else. You can also use 80 and 3306. Those are typically the default, right? The browser's default is 80. Whenever you go to like facebook.com, it's actually using port 80. When it's sending the information, by default, it's using port 80 unless you specify otherwise, right? That's the default for web servers. And 3306 is the default for MySQL. The reason I don't want to use it, first of all, I might have another MySQL running on my machine because I do so many things, so I don't want to use the default one. And for you, it might be the same case, so why not use just the MAP default? Even though you're free to use whatever you want, but my recommendation is use the MAP default, all right? So 8889 for database and 8888 for web server. Remember that. Okay, then again, preferences under server. This shows you where the document root is. And you don't really have to change it. I don't see any point in changing it. And to get to it, you just click on open and finder and you will open it. It's, it's pretty much the same on, on uh, Windows. It will open it for you. In my case, I have it bookmarked here. So it shows up right there. But uh, on yours, it's going, to, it's going to open the full path. And you're not going to have anything inside of it except that PHP, that uh, index.php. That is the home page we just saw. And everything else is going to be empty for me. I've done a lot of things. I've done, I've set up other sites. Uh, that's why you see a bunch of folders here. I have test link running and a bunch of other like demo sites. The first website I showed you, this one here, uh, the local demo store, that is this one here, local demo store. And then we're going to just create our own just like this. Okay. In a minute. Another thing I want to show you is when you click on web start, it's going to open a page. This is the same page that it opened when we start the servers. And this page just explored it. It shows you information about your machine, about MAMP and everything else. What we want to pay attention to is under MySQL. Under MySQL, it gives us the host, which is local host, the port, which we set, the username and the password, really important, right? When we want to connect to a database, we need username and password. When WordPress is connecting to a database, it needs the username and the password. So remember those, not those, but it's easy to remember. It's root and root. Another really cool thing, there is PHP My Admin. Okay, Let's click on this link. This is a tool of its own. PHP My Admin is a popular tool used to connect to databases and work with the database. So this is a UI to, to talk to the database and it comes with map. Okay, we're going to use it shortly. And typically to talk to the database, I use Workbench. Workbench is one of the most popular one. I, I, I use Workbench professionally. This is Workbench. So if you are one of my students, you definitely uh, want to use Workbench. It's, it's more professional and it's really awesome. But for now, just to keep it quick, and, and since everybody already have my uh, PHP my admin, we're going to use PHP my admin. Okay, so now we have our uh, servers ready. We have our database server. The fact that we see this, we know the database is connected and it's running. Okay, so we have installed MAMP, and now we have to download WordPress and install WordPress. So for WordPress, you just go to wordpress.org. Okay, in fact, I was on the homepage. You go to wordpress.org, not wordpress.com. Wordpress.com is something else. Wordpress.org is something else. So wordpress.org and just get, get WordPress. That's all you do, type, uh, click on that and download WordPress 6.1.1 is the available right now. By the time you watch this, I know 6.1.2 is coming out like in a couple of days. So you're probably going to see a different version, but whatever the latest version is, just download it. You don't have to do the exact uh, version that I'm doing. Once you do that, it's going to download a zip folder. So just go to your downloads, unzip it, and you're going to have a folder called WordPress. Okay. You want to copy that whole folder. I'm just going to right click it, copy it, and you want to go to that document root of your, um, your server. So the quickest way to get to that is you just go under preferences, under server, and open and find it. Now I'm in that document root folder on your case. Again, you only have index.php and just paste it, paste that item there. Once you paste it, rename it to rename it to anything you want. So I'm going to call it my site two because I have my site one. I'm going to call it my site two, all right? Just a simple name just, and name it anything you want. That is going to be the name of your site. So the existing site, 
see how I have localhost 8888, the port, in the folder name, local demo store. That's going to be the name you just created, the folder you just created. You, you copied WordPress folder here and you renamed it. That's going to be the name of your site. Okay, you have to remember that. Another thing to pay attention to. Here, when you look at the content, it's a bunch of PHP files, right? There is one particular file called wp-config-sample.php. wp-config-sample. Let's, let's remember that. And then there is wp, there is no wp-config.php. That's, that's what I want you to put. There is no WP config and that's going to be created. There's a sample one, but there's no real one. And when, later on, when you run issue, when you run into issues, those are the two files you might need to modify. That's why I'm mentioning it. Because you make a mistake, then once you make a mistake, the only way to, to fix it is to come and modify these files or to just copy the whole file, like the whole folder again and redo the process. It's quite, quite simple. Nothing to be intimidated about. Okay, now we got this, right? We had we have we created the folder. So now we just open the browser and we go to localhost and eight 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 the whatever port we use and my site my site one my site two that's what I created right my site two and you should get this all like, at this point we don't know if it's what the database is working or not but at least we know we're accessing the WordPress uh, folder. All right, you can choose a language if you want. I'm going to keep English. And here it's asking us, we got to have a database prepared. You have the database have to be ready for WordPress to use. We have a database server running, right? But we didn't create a DB, like a database or a schema. So we have to create one for it. And the easiest one is uh, from here, you, you open PHP Admin, and when you get to PHP Admin, all those here are databases. You're not going to see anything. You're going to see sys. This is the first time. This is this one, SYS. That's the only one you're going to see. All of these are like related to everything I do. I teach SQL, I, I teach automation, which we use databases for automation as well. And I have my SQL courses. That's why all this is like a bunch of other content that I'm doing for my students and for myself. Um, so you're not going to have any of this. So click on new and here, just give it a name. Like you leave everything as default, just give it a name, any name you want. Okay. And usually I want to name it the same as my, my website that I'm creating. So it's easier for me to keep track. So I'm just going to call it my site too. If I do that, I know which database depends on which site. Because I have so many sites. If I keep the different site, different name for the site and different name for the database, later on, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I have problem remembering things, let alone this type of things. So it's a good idea to keep the database name same as your your site name. Click on create, it's created. You should see it here on the on the right on the left side. It is my site too. That's pretty much done. You don't have to come back here uh for the installation process now go back to where we started the installation for wordpress click on let's go we're almost there so database name is what we just created right so i created my site too username we get it from this page remember it's root and root so i'm going to do root root localhost this is where it's, it's super important and this is where like 99 of the 99 percent of my students have a hard time in fact, I have a whole course about this and I'm redoing this because people keep getting stuck here and WordPress doesn't tell you. So it's asking us for the database host, right? Local host. That's right. That's correct. But what it does is what uh, WordPress will try to do is try to connect using the default port, which is 3306. In our case, we're not using 3306, right? We're using 8889 for the database, right? You can double check that. If you forget, you can go to... Uh, let me start from preferences on map and you go to port and you look at my sql if you're using xamp the same thing in fact xamp is, is right there in the home page so you don't even have to go to preferences to see the ports whatever port xamp is using for the database you want to use that okay so now here instead of just doing localhost we're going to do localhost colon and the port number whatever port you're using Unless you're using 3306. If you're using 3306, you don't have to specify it. Even if you specify it, it's okay. In the table prefix, you can leave it as WP. I always leave it as default. But what it, what that is, is uh, WordPress is going to create a lot of tables of its own, right? And when it creates tables in that database, we just created the database, it's empty. But WordPress is, WordPress is going to create tables. And all those tables are going to have this prefix. And I usually just leave it as default, but you can change it to anything. Don't make it long, though. So we're going to do submit. And okay, cannot cannot select database. The database server could be connected to, which means your username and password is okay. 
but my site two database could not be selected. So do I have a typo when I create my my oh st i see I created I have a typo on my database so it, so it didn't connect. I'm going I'm going to create a new one with the right name. I'm going to do new. I'm going to do my site two. I'm sure you guys noticed it when I was typing it. Okay, now I have the correct one, my site too. I'm gonna to come back here, I'm gonna do try again. And I'm gonna do submit, everything is filled in. And I'm gonna do submit, and I'm gonna do run installation. Voila, that means your database connection worked. It's actually okay, it found the, it found the DB, it found the connection and everything, right? So one thing I want you to pay attention, I'm gonna go back to what I was saying about the config file. Here, now we have w, WP config. Right earlier, we only have WP config that sample here. WP config, and let's look at it. We go, I'm going to open it in Sublime and I'm going to bring it over here. Yes, yeah, right here. So, all, I just want you to pay attention to this here. Whatever information we just provided in the UI is just going to replace it, it's going to create the file with that. Okay, the username. This is very important. If you have a problem, if you can't connect the database, if you mess up somehow, you come here, open this file, and modify this. You probably just have localhost here. Make sure you put localhost 8889, okay? Whatever the port number you use, okay? Do that. If you don't have a config file, WP config, open the sample file, right? Then this one just has placeholders and fill this in. Fill this in with the information you want. Here is here is the most important part, localhost and add the port. Usually the issue is with port. Give it the database name, the username and the password and save this file instead of wp config sample.php save it as wp config.php remove the sample okay so instead of wordpress itself creating this config file you will create it based on the sample and then you, you should be able to get to this page okay that is a gacha and that's really what i want you to pay attention to then here give it a name a site name the site name is what is going to show up here see how it says demo store i'm just going to call it uh, let me just say live store, right? Live store username is just a username for your WordPress admin. You have to remember this one. This is how you're going to log in to the back end of WordPress to make changes. So I'm going to use admin and I'm going to use password. Very simple because this is local. When, you, when you're working with me and when you're doing this type of things, don't ever use a password that you're going to use in real life because this stuff can get leaked. You might share this with a friend. Like I share this with my students all the time and I share the database as well so passwords and stuff are in there so i never use a, a password i would ever use in a real life somewhere else here i just keep this really basic because it really doesn't matter plus this is local so make sure you don't use like one of your passwords like you know the same password you use for social media or the same password you use for your banking don't use it here like you got to be smarter than that right okay so you got to confirm a use of weak password because i'm using the demos password in the world right and um, for email i'm just going to give it my real email admas at superscue.com and you're going to click on install and voila if you see this that means it's installed let's log in real quick so we log into the back end and uh, i just said admin and password like that. i cannot type there you go this is the back end of wordpress we just installed wordpress on our local machine we have a fully running wordpress site if we want to go what the front end looks like this is the back end of our site you can just see at the corner here or the left corner it says live store you can click on visit site and this is what the site looks like there is barely any pages there's a sample page and there is the home page which has nothing and we're going to configure this to be the way we want it to be but the main goal of this video is part one to install wordpress and make sure it's running and there we have it so let's look at our check checklist wordpress is installed uh, down, uh, downloaded and installed all right and we're going to go to another video and we are going to customize the site